This week we're talking new Star Wars movies and Star Wars VR. And also other related Star Wars stuff. Like we always do. Because it's in the name of the show. This is the Star Wars Show. From the Lucasfilm headquarters in San Francisco, here's your hosts, Andy and Anthony. Hello and welcome to the Star Wars Show, the only Star Wars show on the internet that won an Emmy. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> It was an honor just to be nominated. But it felt really good to win. <laughs> Let's go to the news. Last week, the Walt Disney Company revealed lots of new release dates for upcoming films, and Star Wars was well represented. Three new Star Wars feature films are set for release on December 16th, 2022, December 20th, 2024, and December 18th, 2026. One Star Wars project we did know about but still didn't have a release date for is Vader Immortal, the new VR experience from ILM XLab and Oculus. Well, that all changed last week when it was revealed that the first episode will release on Oculus Quest on May 21st. Star Wars Vader Immortal Episode 1 follows a Force-sensitive smuggler brought to Mustafa and tasked with helping Darth Vader recover mysterious artifacts. For more on Vader Immortal Episode 1, check out VaderImmortal.com. And for more Star Wars news from around the galaxy, check out StarWars.com slash SWS. That's it? That's all we've got for news? Yeah, but there's more show. Don't worry. Whew. Yeah, exactly. Watch this. The Star Wars Show presents Everything is Important. This week, the half a board. Limited to 14 seconds of screen time, the thirsty Hapabor was the hefty creature quenching its thirst on the desert planet of Jakku. And without the parched Hapabor knocking over Finn from his water dish, Finn might not have noticed Rey getting attacked, leading to their meeting and swiping the Millennium Falcon from Ankar Plat and delivering the Falcon to Han Solo, who then introduces Finn and Rey to Maz Kanata, who just so happens to have Luke's lightsaber stored away, resulting in Finn bringing that same lightsaber with him to Starkiller Base, allowing Rey to duel Kylo Ren and ensuring Luke Skywalker will not be the last Jedi. And without the Hapabor, Rey and Finn might not have met in the chaos of the First Order's attack, leaving Rey and BB-8 to wander Jakku on their own until she finally decides to sell them for those 60 portions. The legacy of the Jedi salutes you, thirsty Hapabor. I'm so excited to be sitting down with Kevin Scott. Welcome, sir. Hello there. I have only Jackson-related questions Let's for you. Let's go for it. That's all I have. This is the Jackson show. Isn't you, it? to me, are the person who brought back the giant rabbit. I did it just for you, obviously. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people are very happy you brought back the giant rabbit. I say that to everyone I meet, <laughs> whether they know who Jackson is or not, yeah. to be honest. They're just like, hey, Kevin yeah. Scott, I brought back the giant space rabbit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is fun. You've been having a lot of fun on Star Wars Adventures. Oh my heavens, yeah. It's been amazing. The a year ago I was on here and we were just talking about doing the Han Solo stuff and then since then we've just brought everyone back and yeah the Jackson thing was just crazy because for me Jackson was Star Wars before I saw Empire Strikes Back before I saw a movie I'd read Jackson so really? I, was, I was very upset when I saw Empire Strikes Back where's the rabbit just where is the rabbit <laughs> that's amazing um, so yeah I basically started campaigning from the moment I started writing Star Wars can I put Jackson in this we ready for Jackson yet? yeah yeah you just tell me when we're ready yeah, for Jackson and then finally the email came through saying we're ready for Jackson but I know that you're doing a lot of other really fun stuff, stuff that I'm absolutely loving with Star Wars Adventures. The Tales from Vader's Castle. Mm. It's like an old school EC Comics horror yeah, anthology. Yeah. It's one of those moments where you go, are they going to let me do this? Oh, oh, they are. And I think the two things, Jackson was obviously big on my list mm -hmm. to do. Remake the Wicker Man with Ewoks. That was right up there. And strangely, they let me do that as well. So now I've got to aim higher. I should yeah. Think of what I could do. yeah, I mean, I'm a massive old Hammer Horror fan, Universal. So the chance to do something in the Star Wars universe for kids as well. Well, yeah. Was too good opportunity to miss. I mean, obviously the Wicker Man with Ewoks is mm. a very, the very Wicked high, Man. high watermark yeah. for Star yeah. Wars horror. Yeah. But when I started reading the issue with Obi-Wan, you did a Christopher Lee Dracula comic yeah, yeah. in Star Wars. That was the entire <laughs> basis of the entire miniseries came from me and Mike Seglain from Lucasfilm talking about this going, what we need to do is do a Christopher Lee vampire Dooku story. And that's where the miniseries came from. We were trying to work out how we get Tarkin in there to try and stake him, but we just yeah. couldn't quite make it work. It's all come from Christopher Lee. Everything's from Christopher Lee. And you're doing a lot of wonderful stuff. Obviously, you wrote the young adult Wild Space novels, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff going on in Star Wars Adventures yep. in Wild Space. Wild Space has to be a really fun place to work in as a writer in yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, because anything goes. It's literally a place where they don't know what's on the next planet. Following on from Adventures, we have now got this family, the Graf family, who spend their entire life out there. And it's been great to see that build over the last few years. So it's been great to return to those 
characters. You've got more stuff coming up with mm -hmm. adventures, right? What's in the works here? I'm back writing Obi-Wan again. Obi-Wan and Captain Rex. Then we've got Anakin teaming up with Yoda. And then Han and Luke teaming up to try and impress Princess Leia, which is just too much fun. Kevin, thank you so much for stopping Thanks by, for sir. Me. This was wonderful. Thank you. Just watching the Star Wars show. As we mentioned ever so subtly at the beginning of the show this week, the Star Wars show won its first ever Emmy. Woo! We won the outstanding daytime promotional announcement topical Emmy for our Star Wars Arrested Development sketch that we did with Ron Howard last year. And we would like to thank our amazing crew for making this entire thing we do possible. Our executive producer and boss, Nikki Capaferi, John Harper for producing and directing the show, Scott Bromley for producing and putting the words into all of our mouths. Our incredible associate producer, AJ Camarillo, our graphics guru, Tony Schurg, our amazing production coordinator, Anina Wallace, the incomparable Kyle Ko and Frank Knight, without whom this show would not even get out the door every week. And of course, you the fans. Without you, we wouldn't even have a show, so thank you for being part of our silly little slice of Star Wars fandom week after week. You guys are what keeps us going. This one's for you guys and girls out there. Shall we close the show? Absolutely. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and give a random person a high five this week. They'll appreciate it, maybe. Definitely. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. You just gotta look at el elbows, otherwise you'll yeah. kitster it. You know, easy. Just don't slap a random person by accident. Don't slap a random person. Don't kitster it. That's basically all the advice I have. Maybe this challenge was was asking a bit much. I couldn't do it.